Welcome to episode 10 of The Wheelhouse. I'm Andrew O. With me this week, as always, is the illustrious Sterling Gavinsky. Demonstrably. Hello. And the inimitable Gus Reeves. What up? Inimitable. Inimitable. Wow. I could probably imit him. Oh. Yeah. Do it right now. Gus and yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to hear. Hey, it's me, Gus. Uh, Andrew, what's your favorite band? Favorite band? Uh, does Elton John count? Yeah. Okay. He sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I was pretty, pretty skeptical good. on that impression at first, but you, you really got <laughs> it. As you are end. with most things. As you are. In 20 minutes, as of this recording, I will be skipping class. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Having my coding lab that I decided I probably won't go to because they're a waste of time. Mm. As is the regular class. So, which, yes, many interesting things have happened to me this past week. Lay it on us. Like. Like what? (laughs) I'm glad you asked, Gus. Last Monday was the first class of college I ever skipped. Oh my God. Yes, it was a big deal to me. So big that the rest of that week I skipped like almost the rest of my classes. (laughs) If you really let it go to his head, yeah, it's I got, been affecting got him. Got a taste of that f- sweet freedom. <laughs> and then he's never going back. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a drug you can't get off of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, was, yeah that was my J. Reed heroin high. <laughs> yeah. Not going that to class. Heroin moment. Yeah. Yeah. Every time you didn't go to class. But the reason I didn't go to class was because I was in deep preparation for shooting my short film that weekend. It's called Tableau of Two. It's from my Production Two class. If you don't know, we're actually all film majors here. Oh, what's yeah. uh what, what's tableau mean again? I always forget. You told tableau me is, five times. It's, what? Isn't it it's a like, table? No, it's like a. <laughs> it's like a, a picturesque scene or a striking scene with like persons or objects. So it's very general. So you can pretty much make it mean whatever you want. Oh, yeah. So yeah, really stressed getting all that stuff together, locking down locations, scheduling with actors and crew and cast, and spending lots of money on food and props and whatnot. And yeah, so we shot over two days and some semi-successes, some semi-disasters, pretty all over the place, but it's done and I'm really tired. And I came to the realization because of these recent events that grades aren't important. You just realized that. Welcome to the club. No, I always, okay, I always believe like grades weren't important like growing up. Like in grade school or whatnot. In grade school. <laughs> but uh, I, it hit me like, well, middle school, you get good grades, so you do, you know, well, in high school, high school, you get good grades, so, you know, go to good college. College is like, there's like nothing really after unless you go to graduate school or something. But I'm like, well, I guess at this point, what's more important to me, um, you know, getting an A in a class I hate or like making some cool movies exactly the problem with the school system is that grades are like a weird like carrot you know like they say like you dangle a carrot in front of like a reindeer or something or a horse or me you'll go after or andrew if you dangle up an energy ball an energy granola ball in front of him then he'll like work hard to get good grades but do you really care about learning or are you just worried about failing that's that's the problem yeah and sometimes it's like oh if you fail this class you have to rip, you have to take it again and then that you know that'll cause you to have to like be further put behind in some other areas Mm -hmm. it's just pretty ridiculous as a whole uh, listen i couldn't agree more throughout high school you know we were exposed to many different subjects and everything and so we got a taste of or at least i did i don't know about you guys and for the most part in in the sticks wherever you're from or whatever (laughs) but um the boonies you you know i don't need that when i when, when i come to college you know i don't need to keep taking all these classes that i took in high school that i don't have an interest in pursuing i already experienced them experienced them in high school in, in college, I should be able to go for classes that I actually have an interest in taking. And I totally I, yeah. agree. And so, but who, who gives a shit about that? Um, did well, you, you want to say something else, right? Well, yeah. Well, going off what you said, I actually was thinking how I was talking with my boss about this idea that I think the, 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 the notion of being well-rounded is kind of antiquated that, you know, High school is that is it should be the place where it's more generalized. Like, oh, take a little math, science, whatnot. But when you get to college, I think it should definitely be more specialized. Whereas the way it is now, you got to take all these garbage classes you don't want to fulfill like general ed requirements. And I'm taking this Holocaust class right now. Only reason was because of those university curriculum requirements. Yeah. So, 
Anyway. This week on The Wheelhouse, The Wheelhouse Reviews, education <laughs> as, yeah. a, as an institution. Andrew has a real problem with the Holocaust for some reason. Yeah. I think he's a denier. <laughs> Yeah, it was, I, I, I think supplier. it was only five million Jews, not six. That's what uh, I believe. Yeah, well, we're off air. Where's that other million? Down. <laughs> Where's that other million Jews, Andrew? Oh, uh, they they just they were abducted. They just don't say anything, you know. They're still there. Yeah, <laughs> they're still there. They're still there, being holocausted. Man. Anyway, okay, let's get away from this and talk about <laughs> Bruce Springsteen instead. We saw Bruce yesterday. Yeah. The River Tour, right? The, the, yeah, he the, played the whole double album. 1980, The River, which you guys had listened to part of I before? I had never listened never. to any part of it, no. Oh. Like a little bit for me. I listened to it one time through, and then I re-listened to it, you know, going up to this concert. Um, yeah, yeah, concert was cool. The Listening to The River in full was a bit taxing as time went on. Mm-hmm. But when he, when he finished that and started playing the hits and whatnot... It was, it was a good time. The hype was real. Yeah, was yeah. Real. Born to Run comes on. We yeah. were we, come on. We were surrounded by mainly um, whites, middle-aged <laughs> um, folk in heaven's waiting room. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. and and drink and drunk, and yeah. and drunk a lot like of beer. Um, frat boys yeah. surprisingly. And white, and white more yeah. whites. Saw a good drunk fight in front of me. That was exciting. Good drunk yeah, fight. There, was a, there, was a, there was a fight that broke out briefly, <laughs> which w- I was surprised to see at a Bruce Springsteen concert of all things. But fight. Um, cool, cool concert. I was glad. Long I, concert. I, I glad. Like I three and a half hours, hours, which is oh, crazy. Yeah. And we, was, yeah, we were. My legs the, were so like yeah, they were in pain. My legs <laughs> were hurting. My back was killing me. Yeah, back. Oh. Because we were we were on the the floor, that's what you call it, like in yeah. the middle of this arena, and you had to stand there. And we got there early, so we already were standing there for like a good hour. And Bruce was late. Which the, we were there for like five hours. Yeah. This was Andrew's first concert, by the way. Yeah. Other than renowned Tommy was so Tommy What's Tommy was so Tomlin or Chris Tom Christian Tomlin. Thompson. Yeah. What's his name? Chris Tomlin. Oh yeah. Chris Tomlin. Yeah. Um, Christian Rock God. Um, he saw him before. Well, not a god, obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, I repent. Anyway, uh, so, so, so Andrew, will you see more concerts? I think so. You know, like, uh, you know, my favorite, some of my favorite musicians, like Elton John, Stevie Wonder, they're still touring and going around, but I, the reason I didn't want to go see them, I, I thought like, oh, they just make me depressed watching them, <laughs> you know, cause you know, they can't, they're not as, you know, vibrant and lively as sure. they were in, in their youth in the seventies, but I mean, Bruce Springsteen, like, his voice was still great. I was about to say, yeah, he's probably killer. a good, awesome. like, gateway performer. Like, yeah. Especially with, like, the older dudes that you, you're more into. Like, he's so lively and so youthful for being 66. He, mm-hmm. he has a great uh, falsetto. The yeah, end of the river, crazy. he did that falsetto, which I don't think is in the studio version. And it was beautiful. Yeah, so it was, good. It was awesome. Yeah. It's Born powerful. to Run was a highlight for me. That was great. The mm-hmm. whole Same. the whole American Airlines uh uh, arena or whatever Center. you call it, yeah. Uh, they they were up and alive, probably for many of them the first time in decades, <laughs> and um, so it was a real good time. So, so what comes next? I don't know. I'm so tired. It's okay. Um, help me, help me. For those of, for those of you, <laughs> for they pass me the card. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> for those of you who are uh, new to the show, the wheelhouse. Here's how it works. So every week we each recommend a piece of media that the other two have not yet experienced. You know, we, uh, we go out, watch, listen, or play these recommendations, then we come back and review them. This episode, we have a theme to recommend for yeah. next week. Yeah. But first, it's time to review last week's recommendations, starting with a short film called This House Has People In It. Yeah, Sterling's recommendation. It's uh, 11 minutes and 54 seconds. I killed that introduction, by the way. Yes, maybe you should do it from now on. That was great. I always thought that introduction was too long. But um, yeah, it's just, it needs to be more concise, you know. Wait, wait, you mean this card part or the the earlier when we're talking about Bruce and whatnot? Uh, No, the card part. Oh, I kind of like it. I said the exact same thing. Yeah, Yeah. but it, it didn't have that finesse, you know. What can I say? Um... The secrets inside. Maybe. Anyway, this house has people in it. Short yeah. film by Adult Swim, 
right? Is it by uh, uh, it was just, it, it was, was shown on Adult Swim, Swim, yeah, by some guy named like Alan Res- Resnick or something like that. Yeah, and it's a horror film, right? Yeah, is it? I, I think would so. say so. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was like there's like definitely you, like horror elements, but I I mean it's Adult Swim. I mean I thought a lot of parts were funny too. Really? Yeah. Maybe you. I I didn't go in thinking that at all. Real, not, not any part made you like chuckle. I, a I bit? laughed because of how surreal and like fucked up it is, basically. But I, nothing like nothing was like comedic in terms of like in a positive way. Like maybe I laughed at some points because I was like, oh god, you know what I mean? Like with all the kids and all that stuff. Okay, but, but yeah. Before we get into it, let let premise. Yeah, let's explain it. Um, so I guess there's this there's this family, right? There's a grandma, there's parents, they've got a baby, a son, and a daughter. Mm-hmm. And there's also a maintenance guy working in the basement, I believe. Mm-hmm. So it starts off, the daughter is laying face down on the kitchen floor, and she's just kind of laying there for a while, and the parents are trying to talk to her, but she's not responding. And it seems like she, I guess she's being a rebellious teenager or something, and they're getting really frustrated with her. And then suddenly, uh, <laughs> uh, suddenly she starts, I guess, melting into the floor, like through the kitchen floor into the basement where the maintenance guy is. And the parents are arguing and their whole family's falling apart and all this weird stuff. And no one's watching the baby and all these kids come over for a birthday party. It's kind of a bizarre series of events. Yeah, a good thing to note is the, the sort of the form of how this is presented. It's through surveillance footage. And yeah, it, so it's there's, so there's, footage. Like, there's like these separate cameras set up uh, all, all around the house in different rooms. And it cuts in between them to see, you know, follow the, the interactions of the different characters. Yeah. Like the, the, the main uh, locus of action is the kitchen where you have, you know, the parents, you know, talking. And at first, when you first see that body there, you're like, what the heck is that? You think it's like imagined yeah, yeah. or that something. That was a surprising moment. I yeah. was like, oh, what? <laughs> but that, then that they, was so great. Like it just like you see this house and then it cuts sorry, to that and there's this chick on the floor. Like, yeah. Oh, hello. So. Although Gus doesn't agree, this is a complete horror film. I like don't get me wrong. There's horror elements, but I still think there's some comedic elements, too. Sure. Go go into that. I want to so like that. The, guy the, on the, the TV. father. Fa- yes. The guy on the TV is, is funny because I mean, he's just I, I don't know. I thought yeah, I thought funny. that was pretty silly. Yeah. Um, the, the dad is silly throughout the entire thing, in my opinion. I, yeah, I kind of laughed at his performance, but I don't think it was meant to be funny, really. I don't know. I don't think it was meant to be funny later on, but when they first realized that their daughter is, like, stuck to the ground, I, I just figured she was dead. Because um, she never, like, mumbles or does anything she like says, that, right? She, yeah, she doesn't talk, she doesn't move. Yeah, I yeah. thought her body was just frozen. But anyway, at, at one point, there the parents are starting to, like, flip out, and so the, the dad starts, like wail not like crying wailing but he starts like oh look look at this this part is bizarre you guys can't see this there's there's a, a deer <laughs> walks a by deer. a window for some reason yeah. and, and then, i believe something else yeah it holds on and then something weird walks yeah, yeah i thought that had to do with something but me too yeah it's uh yeah. maybe it's a kid it probably does. Oh, for the birthday party. party yeah or the clown who's lost <laughs> yeah it's but super weird yeah so i think that the, the greatest thing about this film is just how it builds suspense over time where oh, yeah yeah the the i think any great horror is that you could there's some element of it that is like lodged in the real world and it feels like, okay, this is something that could feasibly happen. Like the the entire house and all the characters feel very real. This is the, something yeah. that could feasibly happen. Well, you lost me there. No, like no, no, the, no, the feeling, film world. The, the film it, world. Yeah. Like that house and those people could exist somewhere, right? That house and that, that those people could exist. And then she right. starts. And, but then good, like good, she does not go through the good floor. horror adds that supernatural or freaky or unexplainable element in there usually like a killer or a monster or something. So that's why it's so frightening because you feel so, on some level that this is something that could happen to totally. you. Totally. Killer yeah. does not have to be supernatural. You know? I know, I know yeah, I know. Yeah, I supernatural know. or something. I just like yeah. arguing. Yeah. I know what you mean, mm-hmm. like monstrous element, something yeah. unknown. That's yeah. kind of yeah. and part then, of horror. And this plays up that aspect is plainly fear of the unknown because by the end, spoilers, there's like no real explanation for what happens. Yeah. The, the daughter lying on the ground just, you know, falls through and then it cuts to black and then people are screaming and yeah. then it cuts to outside and all the people waiting for the party are face down too. Yeah. And that imagery. That was a yeah. cool ending. Yeah. It's weird. I thought, it, okay. Yeah. There's some great imagery. Uh, what uh, Another thing I love, love about good horror is that when there's 
where it builds up tension in lieu of jump scares. There's there there are no real jump scares here. Yeah, I was kind of expecting it. You guys didn't think it was funny when like the people outside were laying face down, all face towards what? the house. That's no. terrifying. What? <laughs> what? No, no. Okay, when it comes up, like watch it. It looks so funny looking. It might it might now watching it with you guys, but I don't know. Like watching it the first time, lights off. There's all the sound, you know, all the sound, the like the sonic landscape of this is just terrifying and others all these yeah the sound is awesome yeah the sound yeah the sound design's phenomenal i think what i really like is the uh any anytime like the camera moves or switches there's like subtle sound effects that are very yeah, yeah. mechanical yeah. and unnatural yeah it yes. all looks like, like vhs yeah ish like or vcr esque yeah and the editing's great how it cuts in between different actions it does also have some flashes of some imagery like you know that that creepy thing running by the window yeah the weird stuff on the tv yeah the grandma watching the TV the whole time, neglecting the baby. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I was like, oh, God, something's going to happen to that baby. Like, you know, like, like, here, watch the baby. We can't deal with this. And the baby starts, like, crawling off. I'm like, oh, no. Um, Going did, downhill. Did did we talk about, like, the main focus of the entire thing is is about, like, the daughter going through the floor? Yeah, yeah. And so... But so so it comes to a point where she's falling. So she's like sinking through the floor of the kitchen and she's going to go into the basement. And so eventually, like at the end, um, first thing. <laughs> OK, this is another funny thing. I just remembered. He uses a plank of wood yeah. and tries to push her face up. How <laughs> is that not funny? It's hilarious. It looks so. I thought like why what you- was going to happen, like her face would go through the plank. I thought yeah, it was yeah, going to yeah. do that, too. But I, I still thought it was humorous. Um no, but eventually they're like, okay, let's get a mattress. And so they bring a mattress downstairs. Yeah. And then that's that's basically the ending. She falls. You see her fall. and But everything like starts going kind of like haywire and yeah. people start screaming. And then it yeah. shows the people outside all face down on the ground and whatnot. Yeah. So um, what do you think is the meaning behind all this? Because we were, we, we were going to watch this like explanation video, yeah. but it was long. <laughs> an hour and a half. An hour so and a mu- half. There must be a lot to dive into here. And so we're just going to wing it and, and give our <laughs> own interpretations. You one, know? one thing that I saw, I don't know if you guys saw the, I found this on Blumhouse's website. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw that post. Okay. Nope. So on that post, they described some disease called like something with an L. Leukemia. And it's Leukemia. No, it was like a contagious leprosy. Lou Gehrig's. No, it was an, it was not like a real disease. I tried Zika. looking it up, and it turned out to not Zika. be real. Swine flu. <laughs> it was not real, but lupus. It said it was based off of this disease, possibly, and that's contagious, and it causes you to just go crazy to be dead. Or oh, like, and it's it's not. There's another thing, like that weird zombification thing. Mm-hmm. Sleep paralysis. That's that's a whole nother thing. I, that, I, I, scary. I, I get sleep paralysis sometimes. Really? It sucks. Yeah. That's terrifying. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> no, I just uh, I remember the first time it happened. So, uh, like, so I was dreaming. Yeah. And then oh, I'm, I so I was lying in bed in a room that didn't look like my room. So I don't I don't think that has to do with anything. But anyway, all I remember is like a like a like a like a noise. And then it, it seemed like there was like some sort of presence in the room and I've tried like screaming and moving but I couldn't do oh. anything. It sucks. Cameron Cameron said he he had sleep paralysis like when he first moved to to college mm-hmm. and that he like he oh yeah there's a plank in the face in the video. But yeah, he uh he said like it felt like he was about to fall asleep but then he realized he was like wide awake but he just couldn't move and suddenly he felt like someone come to the edge of his bed and like touch his feet but he couldn't do anything about yeah. it yeah bizarre yeah. and he said he saw like a mouse running around the room or something weird like oh huh. there's a really good documentary here's a good plug i don't want to watch it yeah okay I know. yeah I don't, don't. Watch it's it. called the nightmare it's on netflix it's awesome but there's this they keep mentioning like like friends of people who've had sleep paralysis are like yeah whenever my friend tells me about it i have it <laughs> and like oh yeah, shit yeah. i'm like oh yeah it's terrifying it's like but yawning really good depiction of it um anyway this enough of, enough of that t h h p i i on adult swim theories 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 so yeah. I, the first thing that popped in my head which you might think is weird is ordinary people the movie mm. i have never seen it i only acted a, a scene in same. it same that's relevant why so, do you why do you think that so the main character of ordinary people what's his name conrad con mm. conrad yeah conrad yeah so he has you know depression and s- s- suicidal right yeah. 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 And a big point of that movie is that his parents don't want anyone else to know. It's all like we they want to keep that sort of 
affectation like oh we're a normal family yeah. everything's all right and trying to yeah. shield sort of that insight and you know basing off the title and just again the horror element where everything appears normal okay like just normal but there's a one weird weird element about it it's for me thematically the first thing i thought was okay it's just simply saying you know everybody has you know some dark secrets or something messed up about them but you're all trying to keep that outside you know image of just being normal that's the first thing i went to it's okay. very very surface level there's a lot of other things that don't work with that theory yeah. that's just the first thing i thought of my theory is 100 percent correct oh okay lay it on us <sighs> okay well you know the show Family uh, Guy, right? Oh, and there's, I've heard of it. There's yeah. a baby on the show named Stewie, and he's like an evil genius or whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. In this in this short, at one point the baby <laughs> kind of gets off on its own. Yeah. And uh, and and that's when s- s- bad things starts happening, and the house starts filling up with smoke and everything like that, and everything's starting to get hectic. And then there's this one shot where you see the baby outside crawling crawling away yeah. and everything. And then, and that's the last time you ever see the baby. I think the baby's behind it all. I think the baby killed everyone. Maybe some there's the baby crawling away. Yep. Maybe it's maybe it's some Look at weird Con- supernatural uh, demon criminal. baby type thing. Yeah. This is just haunting. Like, look, it's so creepy when she's like hanging through the ceiling and her hair is hanging down. Great ending. Oh, and that goes out of range or whatever yeah. on the camera. And then, and yeah. everyone outside is face down. Why do you think? What do you think that means? Why did that happen? I what? Yeah, like why are they in a circle? And why are they face down? Like, why did it affect them? Uh, maybe, they, maybe they're tired. I don't know. Um, Just crazy party. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know if they were like. I, I assume they wanted to make this like really um, cryptic and whatnot. That's yeah, why probably, there's yeah. an hour and a half long freaking explanation video. So I don't know. I I really can't. Do you think it's like they were going for like a like a like, like a, a message like a demon t- type thing in the house or well okay so the interesting possession or something the, the, the film is kind of bookended by like these uh digital logs it's it, it ostensibly when you see the surveillance footage it's someone accessing previous records of oh, this recording i didn't notice that um that. and there's you know the person lying on the floor the whole time is called subject three prone on the kitchen floor suddenly we know there's multiple subjects family number there's multiple families being monitored. Um, date 2015 is recent. Um, and at the end, too, it says something about um, this AB surveillance solutions right here. Ah. Which is an actual website. Which is an actual website you can go to. And if you look through here, um, again, no answers, but it kind of fills in the picture a little bit. If you read it, 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 it is really, really creepy. Some of the wording. Um, Why are all the like the the pictures of the camera so shitty? They're all like very digital. To like, me, like, that's creepy. Like, yeah, like me too. pixelated. It's creepy. That's creepy. Like broken English. Oh <laughs> okay, everything is creepy. Copyright nineteen ninety two. Copyright yeah. nineteen ninety two. There's oh, a God, apparent, awesome. I think there's another website in which you can play some sort of games that have to do with this this movie or something like that that supposedly answers more. So I guess I think the world extends a little farther into the internet. I think mm-hmm. there's a subreddit too where a lot of people. Uh, I think this has a huge cult following. I'm not saying it's got what like 300,000 views mm-hmm. on YouTube. Well, yeah, yeah, I was I was about to say though, like they went to a lot of effort for just a short, but I guess yeah. it's pretty pretty popular. So the fact that you know it has so many views, cult following, we're talking about it a lot. I think is sort of its triumph that you it sticks with you. Like you think about it after it's done, trying to piece things together, um, and. How it's able to do that on what is obviously a low budget, it's very efficient, not any flashy effects. It's really impressive. Um, Definitely. Oh, and just one other thing that I forgot to mention. So, like, another thing I remembered, you know, watching this was the comic book Sandman. There's one storyline where uh, this guy steals Sandman's, like, red ruby that gives Sandman some of his powers, and he uses that to go into a diner and over like a period of few days just everyone starts going crazy and like you know nailing each other like killing each other mm-hmm. stuff like that like eating each other just like like an influence by this one guy's like ruby like a power that humans are not supposed to access or be influenced by the the movie kingsman has a part like that i'm not gonna spoil anything for you yeah. guys because i haven't seen it. it it's really good but there's a similar theme yeah yeah so I like I really really enjoyed it. It was tense. 
and yeah, it, I again, it too. sticks with you. Like you, I, I definitely want to think about it more. Same. So, that is T H H P I I. This house has people in it. Next, our next review is a is a little little video game, which, uh, oh, it's called Save the Date. And afterwards, I realized there's a connection between Save the Date and this house has people on it. In it. <laughs> On really? <laughs> this house has people on it. Get them off the <laughs> roof. No, uh, it's just simply the fact that they're both very low budget and they do a lot with just in the limited means. Okay. That's it. Yeah. That's they're all I want to say. Because they're low budget. Connection. That's all I want to say. Also, there's a lot death. of things. Yeah. And Metallica as well. Metallica. Death. death. Metallica says self destruction. So I suggested this game because I love it. Because again, I love how much it does, in my opinion, with what little is shown yeah. and how simple it's made um yeah. would tell us a little bit about how like the mechanics okay the yeah so it's, it's uh on the surface level it's a dating simulator you go out on these uh, dates with this character named felicia and you decide you know where you want to eat you know stuff like that. that that's the main decision and spoilers every time you take her out she end up, ends up dying in these completely random ways and you're just when you reset, you're just trying to find. Okay, if I go to this taco place, she dies. What if I go to this burger place instead? Well, she ends, still ends up dying. So the the course of the game is just you making decisions to try and find a path where she does not die, and you, in the end, save the date. Well, that's the goal. Mm-hmm. So you guys played this, and you you guys know I have a great taste in video games such as Frog Fractions and Hateful Boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you want our opinions? Yes, uh, I would love to hear them. Opinions. I just have to give out a sigh. Oh, is that... <laughs> it's my MO for... Is that your... Andrew's ab- video games. Is that what? your abstract for your uh, for your review? That's the one sigh. Yeah. Uh, um, where you to, hate it. Where to even begin? You I hate it. I don't hate it. Um, Really... I guess I should start out by saying this is one of your favorite games ever. Yeah. I'm surprised I'm surprised that you like it more than Frog Fractions actually. I like this game more I, I like Frog Fractions more than this game. Mm. This game is an in, like it I I totally give it credit for being and same with the, same with Device 6. I, yeah. I give it credit for being interesting in presentation and and like what it does, but it's like the like uh like you played Red Dead yeah, you like this better than Red Dead. <laughs> it's a, it's it's kind of comparing apples and oranges because they're so different. You yeah, know? I know, but you said you said as a blanket. Just point this is one of my right? favorite yeah. games ever. Yeah, but uh, why Red Dead why, why do you like it so much? Yeah, like you mentioned sure, yeah. the indie Let's, budget. And yeah, like it's kind of innovative in its own way. Yeah, and what it's trying to say, and for me, it gets really deep, and I was not expecting that. It definitely does. So for me, you know, I love I love games, I love stories, I love writing. It really hit home for me, and really made me sort of reevaluate storytelling in general. Which I don't know if that had the same effect on no, you guys. There's but definitely it was me. a writer's nope. appeal. To this game, you yeah. know, the guy obviously had a lot of fun writing all these different options. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of good, like, literature, so to speak, the way the way it's written. And it's funny at a lot of yeah, points. Yeah. Um, like, I, I don't fault it really for anything that it does. It's just that it was, like, an interesting experience, but I, I, I don't feel it affected wasn't, by it. It wasn't mind-blowing. I don't feel like I will return to it. Or anything like that. Um, also, I became frustrated with it. That I yeah. was affected by it because I was frustrated. By yeah, it greatly. You were there when I played. Yeah, when Andrew. I played the game, basically. Andrew callously lied to us about the length of this game, and he said, "Oh, it's an hour." But what he didn't tell us is it's an hour if you know what you're doing, which it's impossible to the first time around, because this game is basically trial and error, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I just kept getting annoyed at, like, because at certain points I just got stuck and I didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And so I, I um, towards the end of the game, I did use a, a guide. Um, oh, no. I used a video this guide. Is something Gus and I briefly talked about this yesterday or yeah. Monday, I think. I, we, we had different 
uh, end end game experiences. Like you were there when I finished the game. Yeah. So what happened is I got to. I never really got stuck until like you get to this spoilers. You get to this hill. The Hogwarts with yeah shop the Hogwarts thing. pickup stuff. Yeah, yeah. You get there, and that's when I got stuck because I I traced every single line of conversation or so I thought you know as far as I could and I feel like I tried everything and I was like what am I supposed to do? Maybe like she said. If you quit the game, I'll stop dying. So I was like, that's probably the end. So I just stopped playing. So that, I, I assume technically by the rules and yeah. the dialogue of the game, that is the yeah. end in some sense. But Gus, I don't, tell me if this is what you played too, what Gus says. So um, so, I, so I used a video, a uh, video mm-hmm. walkthrough. Mm-hmm. And um, at one point, the dude exits the game, brings up, um, I don't know, like technical terms. It was like the text file of the game or something. And then you type in hacker. And it changes, it changes everything because now, um, like when you go into the game, um, like uh, off the bat, like everything you you're just like I'm a hacker. You're fine. You're not gonna die because I'm a hacker. Like everything changes what? because you're yeah. So, so that's gonna be like a secret. So ending I get so that's a right? secret ending. That's okay. a joke thing. So yeah. Did yeah. you play it again in preparation for this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How does it end? Oh, well, it, the way that Sterling ended it. Well, yeah, except you didn't get there to the full part. She straight up says, like, quit the game right now. You you know, it, it, it's a choice to quit the game. And if you do, not only will I not die, but you could create your own story of how this ends. That's the ending? Yeah. <laughs> oh you, you were talking so to me about right this uh, <laughs> whenever that was yesterday or something. Yeah. About how, like, you can keep, I guess, keep talk, having the conversation with her, and she'll keep saying more stuff, but she's like, quit the game. Yeah. But you know there's another... But if you brain. do keep on going, yeah, she will die. But it's like... So when she says, like, tells you, just quit the game, you, you there's, like, that urge, like, just click one more time because you know there's, like, another line of dialogue right after it, and you feel like, I'm missing out on the full game if I don't read everything. Mm-hmm. But if you keep on clicking, you will get to the point where she still dies. So it, it is a, it's a little when you when you're approaching that quit button it feels really odd and for me just sort of a game being self-aware on that level where to win the game you quit it mm-hmm. and to have to me I had like a, an actual struggle in clicking it because I'm like I want to see what happens at the end that to me I had there's nothing like it obviously very much affected Andrew because yes. he he has brought up how he made this little game what was the game called unnamed program mm-hmm. and it basically uh, can I spoil it sure it basically comes down to this like the same thing right yeah it's like eventually you're just gonna you have to quit the game yeah um because it's like an endless loop yeah Yeah. that you can't get out of but i don't know for me the sort of self-aware aspects and i thought the writing was dope it was funny yeah writing was good yeah felicia's character is awesome felicia's character did you guys at least feel like dramatic or at the beginning like invested like you wanted to save her not really at the beginning yeah not like I was like, oh, I don't care if she dies, but like in terms of like, oh, I really care about the character of Felicia. No, yeah. she was just like, I really? was just a character on a date. I did at the beginning, but I started to hate her because <laughs> oh my I, God. I couldn't get to, I couldn't get to the point where I could explain the situation to her yeah. based on like what op- options I had. And it, it got so frustrating because, and then it would be like, oh, and then ninjas broke into the restaurant and killed Felicia. <laughs> A car crashed into the restaurant. You made it out alive. I mean, but Felicia. Didn't. I know. Yeah. So when Gus mentioned like this game's very trial and error, but for me, you know, before you get to the Hogwarts place, you know, she dies a lot, but you you learn something about her every time. You learn a little bit about her past and her personality. Yeah. So Not when if you, you don't know where to go, so it just seeps. <laughs> a white light uh, suddenly appears, and uh, an explosion happens. If I have to see that one more time, I'm gonna go crazy. Anyway, continue what you're saying. But like, you know, you you learn a little bit, pieces of information about her every time she ends up dying. So when you get to the point at the Hogwarts place, for me, I felt like I knew her really well as a full character. Yeah. Same. Um, and she she opens up too. I don't know. I don't know how long your character has known her because I don't know. Had they been dating for a while or were they just okay? Know. They never say. She totally opens up when you get to like the her childhood hangout spot or whatever, yeah. and she's like, she's telling you all these like deep things. Like she's like, oh, you've never played Chrono Trigger, like <laughs> you never played Final Fantasy, Fantasy VII, yeah. all the stuff. And she gets like, she talks about all these like elements of storytelling, like you were saying. And she like, one thing that's kind of funny is the thing you just said about like how you were mad that you have to make your own ending or whatever. Like that's actually in the game. Yeah, like, yeah. that's 
part of the game as well. I like I like all of the elements, but I think I'm jaded because I got so angry at the game. I got so mm. frustrated. Yeah. And for me, that makes me not like I'm struggling with Undertale. There's a bad right taste now. in your mouth when you get frustrated. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I can appreciate it um, on what it does well, and it does a lot well, no doubt. Uh, there's some cool so- uh, songs. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the Thai, Thai restaurant. restaurant one. Yeah. <laughs> you great, can, great song. Uh, the soundtrack's on Bandcamp for pay whatever you want. So yeah, if you want to get that nice. <laughs> in your life, you can. Yeah, I would. I would definitely. Rec- there's people I know who would like this game. That's yeah. the thing. So I, do, I can definitely. Rec- I know Cameron would like this game. I know plenty of people would like this game. If you like existential indie games, because they're abundant, surprisingly, <laughs> in weird Not ways. Um, yeah, you check this out. You'll 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 probably get a kick out of it. Mm-hmm. You you disagree? No, I'm just I I agree more than you. <laughs> so yeah. d- you're d- one of those people that like yeah. essential indie games. Disagree to agree. Sounds good. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I liked it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. A lot. Just just frustrated. By so it. All my all my game suggestions have have mis- had a similar tone. Where I'm enthused with it, and you guys are like it's good. The, uh, Device 6 was not as frustrating as Save the Date for me. It was frustrating for different reasons because Device 6, I think, is legitimately a hard game. Yeah. Like, it's actually a hard game. This game is just tedious. Yeah. Like, you're kind of, not only are you doing the same thing over, which I under, you're doing the same thing over and over, which is kind of part of the game, but also you, you just kind of get mad because the same things that keep happening, you're like, stop doing that. <laughs> I, can't, I can't make you stop doing this. And mm. I guess that's kind of where the ending goes you're like oh if you don't want her to die don't play yeah so i understand but i'm frustrated with you well gone home is cool gone home is awesome yeah oh yeah i suggested that are those the three games you suggested yeah, yeah. gone home yeah. device yeah. six saves the day. he, he just becomes more and more indie so <laughs> oh i know the I, next i know he's <laughs> like the easing one. us into yeah. it i know the next one i'm gonna recommend i'm trying to think of Games I could even recommend. I can never think of one. But I'm going to go I'll, hear yeah. the, the creator None of Monument sure. Valley talk tonight. Really excited about it. Oh, you're going it's to that? cool. Yeah. yeah. Is that like six or something? Guys, have you played that Monument Valley? No, I don't even it's know what that really is. It's really good. Super cool. Yeah. It's like $4 or something. Yeah. It's a, is it existential? No, no, not really. No, no, it's just a fun puzzle game. So, really yeah. Cool. iOS puzzle game. Yeah. Inspired by MC Escher stuff. So like impossible geography, uh, geometry and stuff. Mm-hmm. Really cool. Yeah. Now, moving on to our final review. Gus. Drum roll. Master. Master. <laughs> Master of Puppets. <laughs> uh, Master of Puppets, Metallica, 1986. Pretty much their mag, mag, magnus opus or whatever that was. Magnum, magnum opus? opus? Magnum opus, thank yeah. you. They're dookie. Um, magnus opum. <laughs> magnus opum. <laughs> magnus opium. Magnus opum. Wait a second. Anyway, no, no, no. I'm getting. I'm go- having flashbacks to choir, eighth grade. But um, sorry. You guys sang Master of Puppets. <laughs> Shell shock. Um, no. Um, anyway, this was a, a huge album for me in my not so long ago youth of uh, a fifteen year old wee Gus. Wee. Um, wee wee. Basically, uh, uh, Metallica and, and and Megadeth, who are rivals, so to speak. Um, they they were huge. Uh, 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 influences uh, musically for me. They they were the bands that made me want to pick up guitar. I was heavily into thrash metal for like two years or so, um, and so I I know like the first five Metallica song uh, album songs albums and and first few Megadeth and Slayer and whatnot like the back of my hand. Nice. Like um, so yeah. So uh, with that being said, I I recommended it because it's slightly relevant it's its 30th year and it um like i said last week it's getting added to the national um audio registry or whatever the fuck yeah. it's called and um so i i i wanted to, to have you guys hear it even though i i didn't think andrew would like it but um anyway what do you guys think um i liked it a lot like it's funny you mentioned the the kid gus thing because i was kind of thinking of that as i listened to it because I, I know this is a very like, what's the word like formative seminal album? Yeah, yeah. It was a very uh, important record in your in your music listening like evolution or coming of age in my life. And I told totally, I totally got that vibe. Like, I, if this was something that came to me, maybe when I was fifteen, sixteen, I totally would have 
I totally would have been into this very heavily. Like this is, it's, I mean, it's not like entry level, but it's really good. Like if you want to get into, I guess, heavy metal or thrash metal music, this is like the go-to one. Yeah. Yeah. Or so I a great entrance. Yeah. And, um, I liked it a lot. That's a pretty good. It's summary. fast and it's furious. Yeah. And like when you're in movies, angsty teen, it's like, it's like perfect. It's like, wow. It's like, fits like a glove, you know, <laughs> or one of them, these hands at the top here. <laughs> also, yeah. S- such a sick album cover. I love the album cover. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Anyway, Andrew. So I listened to this album three times, and I grew to like it more every every time I listened to it. First time I listened to it was when I was really depressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Being stressed from my movie. So I was listening to it, and all the songs sounded the same. Everything just sounded bland. I was like, this is all right. I think it's just... And I, Afterwards, I'm like, yeah, I'm just pretty sure because I'm not in the mood for this right now. Second time I listened to it, I definitely knew, okay, there's not a single song in here I do not like. Um, it's good. And I was like, this is good, but I don't love it. Maybe, I don't know, thrash metal isn't for me. But then I listened to it a third time, and I think I knew what my problem was. Hmm. I was not listening to it loud enough. <laughs> True. <laughs> this is something you, <laughs> you can't you listen should, to it softly. This, I had it at a reasonable volume, but if you, you, this is something you had to listen to pretty loud, right? Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. So I did bombastic. that, and yeah, I enjoyed it a lot more, but still didn't love it, and I was kind of confused because the one album that was going that I was referencing this whole time was Paranoid, Black Sabbath, because mm-hmm. I, when I first listened to that, I fell in love with it like track one, and I love like every song on it. Whereas this one, yeah. Really like every song, but it didn't hit me right away. Like, oh, I love this, and I'm I'm a little confused as to what the difference is. I I am the opposite of you. Oh, really? I, with this album, I pretty much fell in love with it right away. With Paranoid, it took me a while to really get into it. Um, probably because I mean, I just so. Let me get, just get, go back to my thrash metal days. I was a big thrash metal elitist. I didn't like any other music really, and I well, other than like songs that i like grew up on i begrudgingly still listen to like beatles um <laughs> hits and whatnot um but yeah so for for a long time i was like if, if it's not thrash metal I'd, i didn't want to listen to it <laughs> and so when i started to expand a little bit and then so i i listened to older heavy metal and then like early death metal and whatnot mm-hmm. and of course black sabbath is pretty much like the flagship metal band probably ever if not, if not them, then Metallica would probably be that. But um, and so yeah, when I first listened to Paranoid, I was like, "This is slow, boring." But yeah, no, I like it a lot now. That's what I was about to say. That that is the obvious. I haven't listened to Paranoid, but the obvious difference between Metallica and Black Sabbath is that there's the, all these rock influences, Black Sabbath, mm-hmm. and it's like groovy, you know, and it's slow, and I guess a little more psychedelic bluesy, too. Very bluesy. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Metallica. Is it's got more like a, the punk feeling to it, you oh, know? Yeah. It's fast yeah. and it's 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 heavy, but it's not slow. Yeah. And I think, judging by what I know about your music taste, I can obviously see why you like Paranoid way more. Yeah. But then also, I'm curious, what did you think about Ride the Lightning? I've never heard Ride the Lightning. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. What? Had, where does like Ride the Lightning st- stand? Oh, uh, well, I think I like Master of Puppets more. I think Ride the Lightning. I okay, Ride the Lightning. All right, first listening Ride the Lightning and first listening to Master Puppets, I like Ride the Lightning more, but now I like Master Puppets. Did more. you only listen to Ride the Lightning once? Yeah, I, I yeah, I haven't gone back to it, mm-hmm. but yeah. See, for me, Bl- Black Album feels like a more mainstream version of Master Puppets, basically. Oh, yeah. Like that's exactly <laughs> to me, it feels like a, a very similar album, but just like like a pop metal version, basically. I mean, that that's pretty much sums up what Black Album is. <laughs> Just I, li- I like them both for different reasons. I don't think I've listened to Master of Puppets enough to say whether I like it more, mm-hmm. but I do, I do love it. I like it a lot. Well, that's cool. A- any more general comments before we go? A specific song? Track by track. Let's go. Okay. okay. Battery. 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 One of my favorite ones. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people like this one a lot. Awesome. Um, oh, you know what? I'll, I'll comment on something. So Battery starts off a kind of trend on this album. Mm-hmm. Um, at least, let me look. So there's only eight songs. At least half the album starts out, or half the songs on the album, I mean, start off with, with slow, melodic <laughs> intros. And then 
boom and then it goes yeah. right into it fast yeah really this fun. one has like a really nice acoustic opening and then it hits you all at once that's like kind of a pretty iconic metallica thing isn't it like yeah that little like oh how you yeah. say like pretty much all their early stuff had stuff yeah, yeah slow stuff and then it turns into thrashing yeah i love how they deliver battery <laughs> Yeah. Just yeah, really put emphasis on that. And that's another thing. Across the board, just stellar songwriting. Mm-hmm. Yes. I I still I mean, so I've I've kind of, you know, I've um calmed down on thrash metal and even Metallica. I don't like I don't listen to newer Metallica stuff or anything because <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty not very good. But um I've always like <laughs> there's a Ducky com- 3000 <laughs> there's a commented comment. battery <laughs> 21 With days one ago. T. That's recently. Um, I've always loved the the lyrics that uh, he, uh, 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 Hetfield and Ulrich come up with. I like the lyrics a lot. Yeah. They're really awesome. And uh, Battery is is no exception. Battery has some pretty pretty great. Just kind of so so how it's sung. It's just kind of like uh, three words, it's, it's, so to speak. Pounding out aggression, darn it, drop session. Just it's piece by piece. It's yeah. very simple, but it's very it's very punk. This is, that, that part is very punk like. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, great, powerful song, great solo solos throughout. Oh, this is yeah. probably the best so, solo album, so to speak, guitar solo uh, that Kirk Hammett performed on. There's so many cool ones. And uh, a lot of them some are some real heroin moments. Some real, yeah, ha- some real heroin moments. Call back to to Jay Reed. Shout yeah. out Jay Reed. Guest on last week's episode. Um, yeah, I bet you Jay is a Metallica fan. I can see that. We should ask. I feel like, well, I don't know. I feel a like fan, be. or like he likes Master of Puppets. Like a full-on uh, Metallica fan? Oh, I don't know. Mason is not. Mason, do, Mason don't like Metallica. Doesn't he? I think he likes Master of Puppets, though, the song or something oh, like maybe. that. Oh, maybe. I remember he knows how to play it. Or maybe he listened to it back in the day. But Anyway, enough, Master. enough about Mason. No Ducky 3000 comments on this one? <laughs> Moving on from Mason to Master <laughs> of Puppets. Master, Master of, of Puppets. Puppets. The title track. One of their, I, besides Enter Sandman, probably their signature song. Yeah. Um, and one of my favorites, if not my favorite Metallica song. Yeah. It's Pretty so incredible. sick. It, it's long as fuck. <laughs> it's what, like, like eight minutes, eight and a half minutes, or yeah. something like that. Uh, there's a lot of parts to the song. Mm-hmm. This is one of the first songs I learned on guitar. Well, within like the first two years or so. And there's still parts I can't even play that well because <laughs> they're just they're so fast and intricate. Yeah. Um, yeah, this uh, title track is mainly about the effects drugs can have on a person's life. Yes, master. Of Which songs. again goes back to for me, paranoid. That thematically, a lot of their those two albums they have similar oh, yeah. content, yeah. But yeah, the song is amazing. It nails that sinister sound that a lot of their other songs on this album have. Yeah, evil. Um, yeah, phenomenal guitar solo. I love the uh, rhythmic lyrical delivery during the chorus. It reminded me it went back to REM, the sort of obey your master. Oh yeah, how they how they how they deliver that. Yeah, it's very unique. Um, yeah, that that part uh, uh, um, I, t- towards probably uh, towards the end of the song when it's, uh, mm-hmm. it starts building up. Master, master, yeah. where's the trace that I've been at? Yeah, that part is great. Fix me. <laughs> um, and I like the the laughs at the end. Yes, the, la- <laughs> the ending's so awesome with the laughs. Yeah, like it could have been it could, it could have been really cheesy, but it, it works. Yeah. It, it definitely could have been cheesy. Yeah. In fact, I can probably think of some songs from like the '80s with laughs on it that just sound like Crazy Train. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> Train. <laughs> Crazy Train is from the '80s. Um, I I I. Doom 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 doom. Number three. So yeah, the thing that should not be. This one reminded me a lot of Black Album, actually. If I'm not mistaken. Really? Yeah. Like what? In what way? Is this? This is the. This is probably the slowest song okay. so to speak like i think the pacing's like mistaken. consistent through the whole thing also yeah this is uh, uh very uh this was inspired by hp lovecraft's uh cthulhu oh. second song inspired by it and they did a great job and mm-hmm. i well i think because i think it's like perfect for like a monster type thing because it's very uh yeah very, very powerful but also very like dark and everything got that chunky guitar riff yeah yeah 
you can just feel that Cthulhu all up in you. And the solo in the song is so cool. It's like it's like Arabian Nights esque. Ooh, it's yeah. awesome. Um, and it has some of my favorite lyrics on the album. Uh, 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 where is it? Stranger Eons. Death may die. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Sent that to Andrew in an email. Yep. Um, I was like, what is he sending me? <laughs> <laughs> and um, even the ending. I love the ending when they're, they, I don't even know what that is. I guess it's a guitar. And they they make it do this like weird, um, weird sound where it's like. It keeps like, going in and out, so to speak. But um, this one actually took me a long time to, to, to like. This was not one of the ones I was right away. Yeah, Maybe be. because it was sh- slower. Mm-hmm. And I was, yeah, I was a weirdo. Um, I like this song. Welcome Home Sanitarium. Track four, uh, about uh, a mental institute patient. I I would assume, at least. Song deals with being manipulated, Mentally mistreated, abused. abused. Uh centered around the works of Nellie Bly, where she exposed the horrors of mentally ill people, tr- uh, how mentally ill people were treated in the late 19th century, along with One, coo- uh, yeah. one Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which I didn't know that had to do with this song. That's kind of cool. But, um, yeah, again, a lot of parts. Starts off slow. Um, gr- uh, 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 I, sorry, Sterling was, like, making a face. No, it's okay. I'm, t- I'm trying to remember how... <laughs> Yes, uh, Sterling's not prepared at all. Yeah, I feel like I'm a one man uh, uh, talking. <laughs> what about uh, me? What about me, boss? Oh, we're a three per- we're a three person podcast. I yeah, for a second. yeah. Um, <laughs> Andrew, what, what you say something about the song? Oh, I love I'm how talking. they say sanitarium. Yeah. Those are those are Andrew's <laughs> only comments on this album. I love yeah. how they say battery. I love yeah. how they do the chorus. <laughs> I love that chunky guitar. It makes me think of Cthulhu. <laughs> um, <laughs> my feelings. <laughs> great solo. Great solo. Awesome ending. Great drums. Do yeah. You, the drums at the solo part, uh, they just go well together. So props to Lars Ulrich, who usually sucks at drums. <laughs> My other, my only other note. Let's see if you agree that the verses are a little pop-like because some of the vocals have like harmonies that go with it. Welcome to where top stands still. Um, maybe as pop as this album can get. Yeah, sure. That it stood out to me because it was a little bit more like that. But yeah, the songs cool. Cool. There's no song on this album that is under five minutes, so <laughs> be prepared for some long ass songs. Like the next one, which is also one of my favorites, yeah. Disposable Heroes, which mm-hmm. apparently Andrew is not a fan of, and I don't oh, yeah, understand why? how that is possible because this song is so sick. I know. I agree. What? <laughs> I was just joking. Oh, my God. This song is amazing. Jesus. Okay. Well, anyway. That, you just th- did that. Hmm. <laughs> when I, uh, I love going. <laughs> when I first heard the part of the, the song, um, the, I'm going to make it sound horrible because it's a guitar riff but the dun 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 and then it goes into the 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 verse and whatnot i thought that was the coolest shit when i was when i was younger i was like oh my god that we were talking about how we'll keep using heroin moment yeah yeah jay's heroin moments and that for me total heroin moment real heroin total rush yeah yeah power surge down my down my spine so great yeah, there's a little instrumental. At, well, it's instrumental at the beginning before it gets to the verse, and like the drums and bass there are awesome. Um, it might have my favorite guitar solo in the whole thing. Yeah, in the whole album. Uh, <laughs> you guys making fun of me picking out single lines I love when they yell "Back to the front, <laughs> back to the front." <laughs> I mean, that is awesome. <laughs> you will do. Yeah. I mean that's a cool part. I I agree with you. I'm just laughing that every time, <laughs> every song is like I like how they say. Yeah. Yeah, and again, so, content-wise, a lot of venom, a lot of energy, and again, like paranoid anti-war theme. So, probably more uh, pertinent to, to in today than in 1986, mm-hmm. which was relatively peacetime, yeah, so to speak. Maybe if, other than like overthrowing a government or something. But um, uh, yeah, uh, there there is only one part, and it pained me to realize this. Um, cause, cause going back, it's been a while since I listened to this in full. And so, um, there, there's a part of the song that happens twice that I'm not too crazy about. And it's the, uh, 
they, what would you call them, Andrew? Callback vocals. Uh, uh, call response. Call response. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so he's like, why? Am I dying? And then, like, when he says why, everyone, everyone in the band says why behind him. Yeah. Why? I think I think it just sounds aged in the same way that on Say Anything when they did the gr- the gang vocals. Yeah. It's, it just kind of, like, maybe it was cool at the time, but it yeah. just kind of, like, hasn't aged that well. Um, awesome ending. Ending is furious. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, yeah. Number six. Leper Messiah. Probably my least favorite. I don't remember. Yeah, didn't really stand out to me. Um, good lyrics as always, but good, yeah, lyrics are cool. It's about like tele te, televangelists, <laughs> so to speak. Corruption in religion. Yeah. The leper messiah. Um. Also, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Lars doesn't play drums on this. They got really? they got a guest. I don't know who the guest is <laughs> guest though. Drummer. I don't remember. Yeah, maybe we could look that up. Weird. Probably not though. We're lazy. Yes. Um. With that being said, I, I, I still enjoy this song a lot. Um, it's just that I don't think it's up to the up to the caliber that the other Ooh. songs yeah. um, have. But, uh, oh, we're, we're, Andrew doesn't want to talk about it. We're going right into Orion. Well, why would you want to talk about Leopard Messiah when, when you, you could talk be talking about, about Orion? Orion? <laughs> yes. Orion is also one of my favorites. Yeah. In fact... Master Puppets, Disposable Heroes, and Orion are probably my three favorite Metallica songs. The period. This is the ear. The, yeah, like the like eight minute instrumental. Yeah. Right. Orion kind of reminds me of Onrio if you mix up the letters. Uh, anyway, Gus, uh, <laughs> Call what back. did you think? <laughs> uh, what did I think? Oh yeah. my God. I adore this song so much. Um, there. There are so many parts to there's the like, song. Yeah, there's like three main movements. It starts really yeah. loud, thrashy, and then it gets like more quiet. It like sort of fades out to just like a bass in this really calm middle section. It's really cool. And then that guitar swells back in. Yes. And it kicks back up. Yeah. There's some great solos, even a bass solo, mm-hmm. which is awesome. And um, uh, uh, one of my favorite riffs, it, well, I guess, I guess it's the main riff of the song, so to speak, but it comes back in the end. Um do you, do you know what I'm talking about? It clo- this, this song fades out. Sterling hates that, I'm sure. Um, but the, the riff being played while it, it fades out, I could listen to that on loop just forever. <laughs> it's so awesome. Uh, it's a moody song. Yeah. Moody guitar solos. And for eight minutes, not really boring. Which long no. songs like that, they are good ones. They, they have like variation. And this one has like three distinct sections. So, how, yeah. do, how does it compare, in your opinion, to Call of... Uh, Duty, Juarez, Cthulhu, oh, I'll call it Cthulhu on Ride the Lightning, which is the instrumental yeah. on that one. I probably need to go back and listen to it, but oh, okay. just yeah. right now, yeah, I like Orion more. Yeah, I like Orion so. more too. Um, I, I am a big Cthulhu fan. <laughs> Woo! Metal- oh, wait. Hmm? Oh, never mind. No, no, never mind. Damage yeah. Inc. Incorporated. I only have one note for the last track. What? Damaging. All I have written here is headbanging <laughs> <laughs> damage inc is a cool song do you like the way they say blood will follow blood no do you like how they do um they like stretch out damn it and then yeah. they incorporate yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i like that part a lot <laughs> um i like how i love how the song starts i don't exactly know what they do oh um, yeah that weird guitar effect what it is yeah it's yeah. some sort of weird guitar effect it might be the they turn like the volume remember, pedal. Is it like a feedback? Uh, Sterling's just. Are we just gonna take his audio I'm out for this? Incompetent. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I I understand. Um, there's this like beginning part, and it's it's so it starts off slow as mm-hmm. always, um, and then it just sounds like it it, it get, like it's like held out notes, and it uh, gets louder and then goes away and everything. So it might be oh. them doing the volume the thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. Sneaky. There. But uh, super fast song. One of the well, pretty much all the songs are pretty thrashy on this album. But uh, yeah, it's cool. I don't know if I want, would like it as the closer though. Hmm. I actually think Orion would be a better closer. I like the yeah, because uh, isn't Call of Cthulhu the last song on Ride the Lightning? It is. Yeah, so that'd be. I thought it was like oh maybe another instrumental, but no. This uh, genius description over here, it details the titular savage and vicious corporation that enslaves the population and lays waste to humanity. Now oh, that's, that's metal. metal. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Ducky wrote that. Yeah, Ducky 3000. No, Bloodhound. Bloodhound 627. He knows. 
He he's he's one hundred percent. I don't even know what that means. One hundred percent. One hundred percent metal. Yeah. Yeah. So overall, really like this album. I think it's an album that I'm not gonna listen to for a while. But when I go back and listen to it again, I I might like fall in love with it again. Cause there's albums like that for me. I listen to it. This is good. And then some time has passed. And then yeah, when, I, I, when I first right. listen to it again, I'm like, what? Why didn't I love this before? That's that's yeah. how I was with Loveless. Yeah. Which you should listen to for a second time. Because <laughs> the first time I listened to Loveless, I was like, what is this? This is weird. <laughs> no. In fact, everyone go listen to My Bloody Valentine's Loveless. Yeah. Well. Gus, you should go back and uh, listen to that. Aged, Agedis version by Sugar Ross. <laughs> oh yeah, I can now. I think they just announced like a world tour. I don't yeah, know I think yeah, yeah. But that'd be a, that'd you, be a you got concert. this new Master of Puppets vinyl like last year, didn't you? Or something yeah, like that? I kind of want it now. I, it's a it's a it's a sick album. It's really yeah. really great. But enough about those old has-beens. Here is <laughs> here is the king. We're gonna the the, the king of today. The, yeah, the king of I think the, metal. The, the king of comedy, the king of metal today, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Kendrick Lamar. So Kendralica. yeah, so we've done a theme episode before. We did Kurt Cobain, mm-hmm. um, and now we are going to do an episode next week all about Kendrick Lamar and his albums. Uh, section eighty is it? I section think section eight. Or, but oh, I don't, I don't know. Just section eighty. Whatever. Section dot eighty. Um, Good, Good kid. kid. M dot A dot A <laughs> yeah, dot that, D. That, that is city. The it bothers official. me there's no dot after D. Hmm. Is that that Oxford period? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that I've never noticed that. That is weird. Yeah. So the D doesn't stand for anything. It's just a D. <laughs> anyway, nah. Good Kid, Mad City. Uh, to Pimp a Butterfly, which was pretty much acclaimed the, universally. Yeah, the the album of the year last year. Yeah. And then his recent Untitled and Unmastered, which mm. was, was like outtakes from To Pimp a Butterfly. That was released like last month. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's cool. So, I have actually not listened to any Kendrick Lamar. Any? Yeah. You're in for you, a were, treat. you were kind of in the same room when I listened to Untitled Unmastered. Yeah, but I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, someone I've been meeting to go and listen to his stuff. And it's only three studio albums, so not too hard. I mean, I'm going to have to do it anyway for the show. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So we will uh, listen to his albums, give reviews, and also give a general background on Kendrick, his life. A general, concise background. Yes. Concise. Under concise. under 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we're going to still be doing these theme things. This is our second one. We'll see how it goes. Nice. Um, as well as the, the guest episodes. We might be reformatting that, but we are committed to having guests on um and this is news to me oh <laughs> no i'm just kidding whatever just, uh, i'll, I'll t- tell him he's fired <laughs> Fuck, i knew it we'll save that for off here okay um not again yeah but you'll cut that out right <laughs> yeah uh the, the, so the guest things yeah something we were we are committed to do we might reformat it but um if you want to be on the show recommend something to us you can email us at wheelhousecast at gmail.com like chris santi super fan um yeah you could uh hold on which my index card oh here we go like us on facebook at facebook.com at wheelhouse cast or facebook.com slash wheelhouse cast um sorry i'm kind of out of it okay (laughs) not a lot of sleep on coffee which i don't usually drink drink coffee today on coffee yeah whoa yeah i didn't know we were dealing with a druggie (laughs) andrew we're like opposites today because i feel like i have so much energy I could just keep talking forever. Oh, don't need them energy balls. You're going to explode. <laughs> uh, follow us on Twitter at WheelhouseCast. Subscribe to our feed on iTunes, where you can also rate and review us. Still one review. And again, WheelhouseCast at gmail.com. If you want to be on the show, any questions, I don't know, give opinions on any of our reviews, if you disagree or not. Um, if you think our show's, us. Yeah, if you think our show's stupid, you can let us know. Any other plugs for you guys? Not that I can think of. Uh, no. Not at all. Cool. Well. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Gus. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks, Sterling. Thank you, Sterling. Thanks, Andrew. Thank- and Gus. Thank you, audience. Yeah. Most thank importantly. You. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. That's you. Yeah. Well. And Sterling. You're pompous. 